Okay, so now I'm going to talk about instant segmentation. So just before the break, we were talking about semantic segmentation. So remember that semantic segmentation means that you give a pixel-wise prediction of uh, whether each pixel belongs to a category or another, but you don't distinguish between different instances of the same category, okay? So this would be results of semantic segmentation as we have already seen. And the main difference with instance segmentation is that you are distinguishing between different instances of the same uh, category. So this problem is more related to, to object detection, for instance, because you are detecting the different uh, objects that are in the scene, but also providing like a mask for each of them. So this is instance segmentation, and this is what I'm gonna talk right now. So I'm gonna talk about three different methods to do instant segmentation. The first one is proposal-based, that is uh, like the same type of approaches like the ones I explained of object detection. Uh, then there's uh, the recurrent methods, and finally I'm gonna talk about instance embeddings. So just as uh, we were talking for object detection, the proposal-based methods, they consist of you have uh, your image and you, with a, an external algorithm, for instance, you get uh, a set of object of region proposals. So regions of the image that probably will uh, have uh, an object in there, okay? So as you saw that uh, the different um, algorithms that I showed you of region proposals actually were working with segments, so at the pixel level. So they already give you like a, a bounding box of a, a region where probably there's an object, but also a, a mask. So this is a, a type of region proposals. So this uh, paper that they do uh, simultaneously, simultaneously uh, detection and segmentation, so this is instant segmentation, what they do is exactly that. So they have the image, they extract uh, region proposals that have this bounding box and also a mask, and what they do is they, that they extract features from uh, the part of the image of the proposal, so the, the bonding box uh, around the, the, the object, for instance, and they extract features from that region. And they also extract regions just for, from the pixels that belong to the mask of the proposal, okay? So why do they extract features from both parts? First, because if you also have, like, the context around the object itself, you have some context that uh, will be helpful in order to determine, for instance, the category of, of the object. So when combining the features of these two regions, uh, they train a classifier in order to detect if that was uh, one category or another. And finally, also like a region refinement to improve the mask, of this, uh, the mask that these proposals are giving. So, as the same as I said for object detection, the state of the art is this uh, masker CNN. So this was like faster CNN that uh, did uh, ob object detection with uh, proposals. But masker CNN, the difference is that it's just faster CNN with an additional branch that what it does is to obtain a segment for each of the uh, objects in the scene. Okay. So the thing is that for object detection, the state of the art is this algorithm, and for segmentation, it's the same algorithm. So learning both tasks at the same time is very helpful. One task helps the other. So what are now? I'm going to focus on as this is uh, like the state of the art on the differences that uh, masker CNN has in comparison to faster CNN. That is the one that I explained. Uh, in the lecture, and well, the main difference is that first of all, you have this additional branch that will obtain a mask, okay? So if this is like the faster CNN network, and you have here your features, and you obtain a classification and a bonding box, okay, for each of uh, your proposals, uh, this means that the bonding box, remember that this is a, a regressor that uh, improves the, the coordinates uh, of your proposal. And then here, if you want to obtain a mask, what it's done is to add an additional branch with higher resolution. See that this is 7 by 7 and this is 14 by 14. So you increase your resolution and finally you obtain a mask. And here you have your, your mask loss. Sorry. So yeah, the main difference is exactly this. So instead of having just two branches, you have the three branches with the, the mask. So there's another difference. Uh, remember that I told you about uh, this ROI pooling operation. This means that the difference between uh, RCNN and faster CNN, it was that instead of uh, feeding uh, the, the different region proposals into uh, a network 
one time for each proposal, this was very slow, and the improvement in faster CNN is that what they did is to extract features just once for the whole image, and then if you want to describe a certain region proposal, you just scrub on top of the features and extract your descript descriptor from there, okay? So this operation was right pulling, that is exactly this. So you have your, your whole image, you extract features for the whole image, that it, it would be this volume. If you want to describe just the green bonding box, you uh, cut on top of your, of your features, and if you want a uh, descriptor that is five by five, you put a grid on top of it, do the max of each of these uh, grid localizations, and you have your fixed size uh, input to the fully connected layers. This is very important because for a fully connected layer, you know that you need a fixed uh, size input, okay? So this, is, this was what was done for object detection. But see that this has some inconvenience when you want to get very accurate um, mask, that that's your goal when you are doing, for instance, instant segmentation. So imagine this case. Imagine that uh, these uh, are the, for instance, the features for yeah. your whole image, okay? And the black bonding box is the region uh, of the, your region proposal, so the region you want to describe. And finally, you want uh, a descriptor that is just two by two. What happens? That this is not divisible by two. So your regions will have different uh, sizes. So then you will do a pooling on top of here. So you will obtain a number here, a number here, a number here, a number here. But you see that this is not fair because uh, some regions have seen more numbers than the others. So this will generate some misalignment that is not good when you're, you want to generate uh, pixel-wise predictions that uh, the, the, the borders of your mask are exactly where they should be. So what they do is to change this operation of ray pooling, and they do this ROI align. So what they do is that exactly the same, they have their features, they place this uh, proposal on top of it, and what they do is to uh, define exactly uh, like regions that are exactly the same, all among them. So you see here that these four regions are the same. And in order to have uh, the values that, because here, you see that you don't have values. So they do interpolation, so they have the same number of values in each of the regions. And like this, uh, when they do the pooling on these interpolated regions, uh, they have like a more uh, accurate um, boundaries for your masks. And this uh, really improved uh, the, perf the performance from just adding a, a mask branch from faster CNN to uh, add this operation that improved, okay? So here you can see some, some results of, of Masker CNN. So see that this does detection, so you have a bonding box around each of the objects of the scene, and also a mask. And you see that this can work very well even when there are lots of instances in the scene. So what are the problems of object proposals? And that's why there are other algorithms that are not based on, on this kind of, of pipeline that are uh, based on, on proposals. First of all, that if you're working with uh, bonding boxes, it can happen that uh, there are um, more than one object that shares the, the same bonding box. And as when you're doing proposals, you obtain lots of predictions, and after that, you have to do some post-processing step to just keep some of the bonding boxes. So in your post-processing step, if there's some <coughs> overlap, for instance, between two bonding boxes, maybe you're removing one, and that's not what you want if there are uh, two different masks that are in the same bonding box, for instance. Also that you have this post-processing step that is mandatory, so you have, for instance, 2,000 predictions, and finally you have to do this post-processing to just obtain a single bonding box and a single mask for each of the instances of the image. Also that a same pixel can be assigned to multiple instances. And in instance segmentation, it's clear that each pixel belongs to a single instance. When you are doing object proposals, you cannot avoid this problem. And also, of course, that the number of predictions is limited by the number of proposals. So that's why there are other kinds of algorithms that propose other things. So one of the alternatives is to use like a recurrent network. Uh, here it's uh, the first one that did this for instance segmentation. So uh, this work, what they did is uh, given an image, they trained a network with recurrent neural networks. So these are these kind of, of networks that have some memory of what's being predicted. And what they do is to obtain a sequence of the different objects that are in the input image. So at each time step, they predict a different instance of the image. And finally, when there are no more objects in this scene, there's like a, another loss that it's like stop loss that says, okay, there are no more objects, so you should stop. 
So see that in this case, the output of your algorithm is exactly uh, what you want. So you don't have to do any post-processing to filter all those uh, candidates as it happened with the proposal step. And see here that there are no bonding boxes. So uh, in this case, uh, this work, what they did is working just with instances that belong to the same category. So see that here, these are leaves of a plant. So what they did is to distinguish between different leaves, okay? And they also trained uh, the same uh, network to uh, distinguish between different instances of the person category. So you see here that they could uh, do exactly this. So here in, in UPC and with the Barcelona Supercomputing Center as well, so we work with uh, a pipeline like this of recurrent uh, instance segmentation. But in our case, uh, we work with uh, data sets that contain more than one class category. So we are able to distinguish between instances also from different categories. So our approach is similar. So we have our, our network, a recurrent neural network that at each time step outputs a triplet of a mask of an object in the scene a class category, and also a, like a, a score that says whether there's still objects in the image. So when you're running this in inference, for instance, when your uh, stop uh, score says, okay, there are no more objects, you would stop, and then you would already have the result of, of your segmentation. So here, there's uh, the architecture that we did in more detail. So our difference with the, the work that I showed before uh, is that we also added this um, new things that work very well for, for semantic segmentation, for instance, as I told you about of skip connections. So this is uh, our architecture. First, we have our image, that is the input, and we have a typical convolutional neural network. So we used a ResNet. And then this is a encoder structure. Then we build a decoder, but the difference is that our decoder is recurrent. So this decoder will output at each time step one of these triplets that I was talking to you about, so that of a mask, a class, um, a class level, and also this stop score. And the thing is that we also have these skip connections that go from the encoder uh, to the decoder. And yet, in order to predict, for instance, the classification, what we did is to uh, take features from different levels of our decoder to get features that are more related to semantics and features that are more local, aggregate all of those and obtain uh, three different things. Uh, the, the stop, the classification, and we also uh, regressed the bounding boxes of the, um, of the different instances because as Masker CNN, we saw that this improved performance and it was the same in our case. So here you can see some results of this uh, recurrent method. So we tested this for three different data sets. This is the one that I, I showed you before of, of leaves. Uh, but our difference is that we are able also to distinguish between instances of different class categories. And you can see here it's Pascal and Cityscapes that this is, has a data set of urban scenes. And the, the thing about using a recurrent network is that the, the network decides which is in the order in which it predicts the different instances. So we also did, for instance, an um, analysis of which was the order that uh, the network was actually uh, choosing in order to predict the different objects, okay? So we observed that oh, when there were uh, several instances of the same category, as this would be the case of the first row, uh, the algorithm chose to go from one side to the other, so from right to left, for instance. Uh, in the case in, of some pairs of, of, of categories, for instance, when there were like bikes, horses, or, uh, yeah, exactly that, or, or yeah, exactly this, <laughs> with a, a person on top. So normally the first thing predicted was the, the object that was below and then the person. So it, it was like the network could understand that there were these pairs that probably if there's a motorbike on top, there's a, a person, okay? And also we saw that if there was a, a very big object that was predominant in the image, that was the first one that was predicted as well. So now I'm going to talk about a third type of algorithms that are uh, being used for instance segmentation that is very related to what uh, we were talking about, about metric learning. So these kind of algorithms, what they do is that given an image, they predict an embedding per each pixel. This means like a descriptor per each pixel. And uh, what you learn is to uh, make that the, embed, the embeddings that belong to the same category to be the closest as possible and to be as separate from embeddings from other categories, okay? 
So this is another kind of algorithms that it, now it's, uh, it's also used for instance uh, segmentation. And the thing is that once you train this embedding, so you get this kind of volume for each of your input image, for instance, you have uh, the embedding uh, of dimension, wherever. And finally, you have to do some kind of clustering to distinguish between the different instances. So yeah, this is uh, one of the works that did this. So semantic instance segmentation with a discriminative loss function. And what they did was exactly this. They have a loss term that has uh, these three different uh, terms, one that uh, forces that embeddings of the same instance go together, uh, another that separates uh, um, um, embeddings from different instances, and finally a regularization term so that embeddings don't explode. And here you can see some results and also some representation in two dimensions of the embeddings they learn, for instance, for, for this uh, kind of image. Um, you can see that there are separate clusters. Each of the clusters belongs to a different object in the scene. Okay? So this is another kind of algorithm that it's very simple because actually it's like you can get any convolutional neural network and at the end you just train uh, this metric learning to separate embeddings and then you can do some post-processing or you can do anything on top of that in order to separate uh, the different instances. And these are the results that you obtain for these data sets of, of cityscapes. Uh, that you can see that the state of the art is marked Air CNN that actually has a lot of performance and this one is a little bit below but uh, well actually below but the thing is that still this method is very simple and it's a single forward pass you obtain the embeddings and do the clustering and that's all so yeah that's all so I, I've been talking about these proposal based methods that are very related to like uh, proposal based methods for object detection. The difference is just that in this case, you are also predicting a mask, but you see that there's still this uh, inconvenience that proposal based methods have. So there are the other alternatives of using recurrent methods or these instance embedding methods. And yeah, that's all. If you have any question. Mm -hmm.